This is CS2510 Spring 2014 Week 4 Lecture 1. So today we're going to talk about the second dimension, particularly Chapter 7, uh, or specifically Chapter 7 from your assigned reading. So the concepts today are we're going to talk about two-dimensional arrays, matrices, rows, columns, matrix operations. We already touched upon this quite a bit in lecture, but today we'll quote-unquote officially touch upon it. Uh, and then we'll look at how to visualize two-dimensional functions via contour plots and grid generation. The language features we're going to learn are zeros, ones, uh, rand. We actually learned about rand, so we should actually take this out. But contour and p-color. So let's get started. Let's start with a very simple example in MATLAB. I have MATLAB fired away, ready to go. So basically, if I do something like a is zeros of three rows, four columns, okay, and then you can see that's what I get. But let's say this is actually module. 7.1.1 and the question asks you suppose this is done and if I say a of 5 comma 2 is 1 what will happen well this won't give an error because you're not accessing the fifth row and the second column element so what will happen is the, this matrix a will get extended with the zeros except in the fifth row it will be a five row uh, two column ma matrix mm, sorry it will be a five row four column matrix but in the fifth row second column we'll have a one and there you go okay so let's look at another example of in this case accessing elements of a matrix so one two three uh let's define this matrix four five three a square matrix uh three by three okay and suppose i say for i is 1, 2, 3, and for j is to define two loops, okay? I say a of i comma j. Notice this notation, okay? So you always say i row and j column equals a of j comma i, all right? And, and then before I hit enter, like I keep telling you, we should have an idea of what kind of result to expect. So let's look at this. Um, let's work on this. So what I'm going to do is so go down here, and then if you think about it, all right. So I goes from one to three. So let's just do it like this. So there's actually module whoops seven dot one dot two. So when I is one, okay, we know what A is. So A is going to be one two three four five six seven eight nine all right so there is the matrix and then this is m seven dot one dot two i is one okay so j is um, one so what i get is a of i comma j equals a of j comma i i believe that's what we are looking at yep a of i comma j so let me write that down here a of i comma j equals a of j comma i so again you just have to go through this step by step so this is a of one comma one equals a of one comma one that's what happens here right so and then a of I is one, J is two, is A of two comma one, and then J equals three, A of one comma three equals A of three comma one. So after every step, our here the A obviously doesn't change. Oh boy, looks like I crashed. Well, let's see. Hopefully, it didn't crash. Nope, this did crash. So let's try this again. So, A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 here. But now here, A of first row, second column becomes the second row, first column. So here you go, 1, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then the first row, third columns becomes... Uh, let's see the first row second column 
yeah, the first row, third column becomes the third row, first column, so it's one, four, seven, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and then let's keep going like this. Let me see if I can squeeze i equals 2 in here, right? So j equals 1, j equals 2, j equals 3. Uh, maybe not. No, let me try. So j equals 1, j equals 1 already done, j equals 2, j equals 3. So here, uh, a of 2, comma 1 is a of 1, comma 2, a of 2, comma 2. So this doesn't do anything, a of 2, comma 2. A of 2 comma 3 is A of 3 comma 2, right? So what will happen is, oh, come on, please save. So what will happen here is A will become, so it does 1, 4, 7. Second row, first column is first row, second column, so it doesn't change. Okay, 7, 8, 9. And then this one also, A doesn't change. Okay, so 1, 4, 7, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But here the second row, third column equals the third row, second column. So this will become 1, 4, 7, 4, 5, 8, 7, 8, 9. Okay. And then finally, we can do, uh, so for i equals 3, J equals 1, J equals 2, J equals 3. Let me see if I can squeeze it on this page. So here, on here, the third row, first column, will become the first row, third column. So no change here. Okay. So it's 1, 4, 7, 4, 5, 8, 7, 8, 9. So now the second uh, row, third column, will become the third row, second column. And so there's no change. So it looks like the final answer, I might have, hopefully I didn't screw up anything. Let's find out. 7, 8, 9. Uh, let's see if that's true in the sense. Let me get my keyboard out. Yeah. There. Keyboard's out. Switch to the mouse. Now let's look at what it is. 1, 4, whoops. Let's see. Um, I don't think I need to do any more writing, so let me put my pen away, and then there is my tablet pen. Let's take a look at this. So I have one, four, seven, four, five, eight, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. That's the answer. So that's the answer to module seven one two. But basically, the bottom line is, you really have to just think about the definition of um, what like. A matrix is right by the way this you might be tempted to think this is the transpose but then if you read if you redefine a two three transpose is interchanging the rows and columns six seven eight nine like that and then if you this is how you transpose okay so which is obviously not the same thing um that's about it for uh, examples of matrix manipulation in matlab so let's now get into the crux of this, that is, uh, let's look at contours and uh, cross sections. So what we're going to do is we're, this is basically section 7.2 from your reading. So we're going to create a new function uh, that is going to, it's a temperature profile, right? So what we're going to get is a function, it's a temperature of a plate, right? So temp, it's called the name of the function is T plate, right? It puts two arguments. Uh, X and Y, okay. So, temperature profile of a metal plate, I guess. Temperature. Let me move the mouse away so the mouse doesn't keep moving. Temperature. Temperature profile of a metal plate, okay. So, uh, and this temp is basically going to be 100 times. Note, I don't have to use the dot operator because I am getting a scalar one by one matrix, right? Negative 0.4 times um, x minus one. I don't want the help, dude. There, x minus one, the whole squared, okay? Well, let's see, I gotta read the book and check the parentheses, all right. 
this is point x minus one. So there's one source centered at one comma three. Okay, y minus three, the whole square. Okay, it's that, and there's another source centered at five comma one. semicolon that so let's uh, for example steep plate right so let's just check this to make sure we don't have any bugs so t plate of three comma four right so something and then let's check at one comma three right so you get a little bit over a hundred yeah and the other one at five comma one it's probably around 80 somewhere yeah 80. okay assume it's degrees Celsius now uh, so it's basically two heat sources on a metal plate, whatever, right? We want to display now the, a contour of this temperature profile. Now, one of the things we got to be careful about is the uh, this is a function of x, y, right? But uh, MATLAB represents everything as the matrix. So we always have n rows by n columns. That means you have increasing y by increasing x. So to accommodate for that, what we're going to do is we're going to define a function on a grid, right, to appropriately handle the mapping uh, of a function argument to the corresponding matrix operation in MATLAB or ERG. There. Okay. And this may, this could be called this is actually called contour generation. And MATLAB does have commands to do this automatically. So I encourage you to explore these commands. One of them is called mesh grid. Okay. Oh, come on. So there it is. Okay. So you can generate the appropriate grid and then pass it into a function to, for example, to surf, to use the surf command, right? So you should explore this. But what we are going to do is we're going to uh, manually generate this in the sense, uh, let's look at F vals all right f on grid so we have x y and then the function handle right um, it's not f vals right it's f vals okay uh, pass in a two dimensional uh, coordinates pass in two dimensional coordinates pass in uh, x comma y so these are row vectors okay and function handle f and then what it does so it's slightly different from your uh, reading f vals is an m by n uh, matrix where f vals so basically m row i row and j column correct but if you're going by row, you want to again access your. Uh, so f of x is the column. So you gotta be careful here. So it's. So basically, you want the jth column, but index into f, right? And then the ith row, but index. So basically, you want the jth column, but index into x, not f. And you want the ith row, but the index into y. Okay, so that's all that's all it is it's that simple it's easier to write it out and understand it than explain it like the, let's talk about it so let's just do, do this so you have m rows and n columns so m should be the length of y and n should be the length of x okay And then so f vals is zero m comma and actually this is very similar to the one in your reading. I'm just looking at it. And then whoops, right there. For so now, for j is one to n for m rows n columns. So here we go, i through and j column. So m rows n columns there. So f vals of 
i comma j is basically f of x of j comma y of i okay so end end and then let's put a semicolon here so we can suppress the echo now let's say uh, let's say f on grid right and then let's look at let's do a simple script this is definitely in your book so i'm just gonna just use the script right file new script so let's call this example 72.m so basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a contour plot and cross sections function of two variables so generate x and y okay. so x is going to be lin space 0 comma 6 comma 301 points okay y is going to be lin space of uh, 0 comma 4 201 points okay so this is temperature wells is going to be f on grid of x comma y at t plate so this is how you pass in a function handle okay so let's do a contour of x comma y comma t valves and then let me just uh okay let me just run the script hopefully there are no errors let's do example seven two and find function zero okay so i know what mistake that is that's basically should be zeros let's do that let's fix that bug hopefully there are no more bugs but if there are we'll fix them Valves, okay, contour of oh, what do I call it? T valves, okay, case sensitive. So let's just do that. Let's try this again. Wow, it's taking some time. Beautiful. So, third time lucky. So, there is the nice contour plot, okay. Now, to display, let's do something more. Let's just display a cross section, let's say, right there. That is, y is 1 for all x. So, to do that, uh, what we're going to do is, let's see. Actually, let's clear everything. Let's try this again, in the sense. I gotta just type this in. Okay. Oops. So, to display this cross section for all x, all right. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, let's see, ty is function on grid, okay, all x, but y is 1, 2, 3, okay, at t plate. So let's do that. And then, whoops, there, at t plate, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say plot x comma ty, but let's get the first profile. Okay, let's plot this in red. And actually, let's leave this in blue. Let's get x. Let's get the second uh, temperature profile, which is y equals two. But plot this in red. And then let's get the third temperature profile. Uh, and then, but plot this in green. I think it's green. Let's find out. Uh, 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 what did I do? X. So all rows. Oh, mm, let's see. Come up first column. So ty is three rows by. Let's do this. Let's just transpose this. Okay. Mm, let's see. I want um, three rows by three o one columns. So let me just do this. Let's just like I said, transpose this. Ty is Ty transpose. Okay. Now let's try this. There you go. Makes more sense. And okay, here is your here is our temperature profile. Okay. And then we can label these plots, but I'm running out of time. Uh, yeah. So that's about it uh, for this lecture. Please go through your assigned uh, reading. 
and uh, that's about it actually for pretty much the course in the sense after this we're going to start at OOP, right object oriented programming which is very conceptual so the core of the the crux of the course after this lecture this is after our actually after the first exam which is next week is going to be object oriented programming examples and you're going to be working on your projects all right see you after the first exam